uh, our text will be from Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 1 through 4. And the title will be, Making Adjustments to the Changes Within Your Family. Making Adjustments to the Changes Within Your Family. And what this particular lesson basically involves is, you have children growing up, but they're still at home. You have children growing up and they leave home, but they're still your family. Uh, they sometimes get married. Uh, sometimes they marry people with other children already. Uh, sometimes you have relatives move in with you for whatever reason. Uh, whether it's a positive or negative that happened to them in life. Uh, and so the idea is that at the same time, sometimes you move in with your children. Uh, sometimes individual thinks uh, that they're no longer the head of the house because they're in someone else's house. But you have to understand, uh, those will forever be your children. It doesn't matter if you stand with them permanently, temporarily, whatever. And so the idea is that uh, sometimes people can feel awkward. We're going to read our text first and show the uh, realm of... Um, rule that exists. Ephesians 6 and 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the law, for this is right. That there's a time frame put on that. Uh, it doesn't say except when you get old. Yes. I'm sorry, sis. Uh, making adjustments to the changes within your family. Making adjustments to the changes within your family. Sometimes the family landscape uh, uh, as far as the children, the wife, who's in the house, who's not, it begins to maybe skate, look scary. You've got a lot of grown people now. Some of have nothing but grown people now. And it isn't that, you know, the person had that, mil that mentality that, you know, when you hit 18, you hit the door. Nothing foolish like that. Just talking about you have people that are in college. Some people are displaced through divorce. They have to have somewhere to go. You know, sometimes people say things that they have to take back later. They say, stay like, you know, when you, when you leave, don't come back. Well, you know, you can't say that. See, it's different things involved to make a person come back. Uh, you may have a daughter who has a wife beater for her husband. And, uh, you know, finally gets divorced. And they may be injured. So they may have to live with you for several years to heal up. So we have to be cautious what we say, you know, uh, it isn't always grown and gone. It's grown and still out sometimes, you know. And isn't that their dead beats or anything like that? It's just the people continue to be in your area. Some people don't leave more than 20 miles from where they were born at. And they're very successful in life. Very financially successful. Just they like the area that they grew up in. And so Ephesians 6 and 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. This word in the law does not mean your parents that are in the church. This statement deals with what is right in the Lord. That's why it says that. It doesn't have anything to see. Now we're saying, well, a Buddhist man and a Muslim can do what they want. No, they can't. Then how, how are they shown as unfit parents? So it has to be what's in the law. So I'm going to say, well, how will they know? Because the teachings of the Lord are given since Adam and Eve to all mankind. It doesn't matter where you grew up. You know right from wrong. There's nobody that's going to rise up and think it was right for somebody to beat their mother. Although they may end up being a white beater, they're never going to say, yeah, man, my dad used to, every now and then, he'd bust my mom in the mouth and throw her down on the concrete. You know, that's just the way it is. No one thinks like that. That's your mother. Nobody's going to think silly like that. And so the teachings of right come out in every home. Eventually, you'll be shown what is right through a coach, school teacher, general readings, television watching, what have you. And uh, the understanding is human beings know what is right. By this rule, do unto others that you have them to do unto you. Nobody wants to be shot at or beat down for no reason. And so a person understands that. Verse 2, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. People think this only applies to the church. Everyone is taught to honor your father and mother. Everyone is taught that. People have to understand no matter what household, uh, you, you may have a lax household, but even if you got a raggedy daddy, he going to in a minute tell you, bomb your daddy. He'll tell you, no matter how many girlfriends he got, how much ginger, he'll tell you, because he knows about honor. He understands that part. He says, why? That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. 
He says, And you fall, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition, he says, of the Lord. Now we're going to go over to Colossians 3 to get some more uh, information that's needed uh, for this particular lesson. Colossians 3, beginning at verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. So this covers children, the wives, the husbands, uh, as well as the parents, how they should interact. So now we have some scriptures to work with. Uh, just as seasons change, uh, we have summer, winter, spring, fall, health changes, sometimes you good days, bad weather, you're young or old, even babies get sick. Wealth changes. Uh, Paul said that he knows how to abase, to be a base out of bound. But I said, well, why would that be? Because the Lord has lessons he wants us to know. Sometimes things are tight and you say, well, you know, hey, I got this done without any extra money. Well, okay, you learn to manage, you know. So, you know, you may never have that happen again and then it might. But the key is, is you know, you can tell others. And so, decisions, they change. Sometimes they say, well, you know, I was going to go to this college, but I changed my mind. After I got, you know, a couple of years in, I want to go somewhere else. Uh, you may say, I had this job I thought I'd be all my life. Now I'm going to go and resign and give me a different job. So uh, many other things change also that are within your family. Uh, we have to understand, uh, children don't stay children. If you live, you'll see them grow up. Uh, as they progress in age, we have to remember that they're not little Billy we can fill up on our knee anymore. Some of them, you can't even pick them up no more. They can pick you up. And they're in the house. Uh, it's not that lazy. They're just still in the house. Uh, and we have to understand, don't let that landscape change strike fear in your heart. Uh, when bodies begin to get old, don't, don't throw in the towel. Well, it's over for us, you know. That isn't what it's about. It's about making adjustments. How it changes. Uh, some people unfortunately have children that get ill. And you end up taking care of your child. You know, it's very devastating. But at the same time, it's still family. You have to make adjustments to that. And so whatever should happen, uh, let us remember there are scriptures that deal with the issues. We are responsible as men for the family. I heard a guy say on a radio uh, program, they were talking about some couple getting a divorce. And the guy was saying, movie star guy was saying his wife was just unruly and wild. I don't want to call out a name. I don't know. I didn't hear all of it. Well, I did hear his comment about it, which was his comment was ridiculous. I'm gonna share it with you. And and it was the guy, the movie star was wild, and the husband was saying she's wild, and you know, I'm out, y'all just don't know her. And so the lady started laughing, reporting, and the guy said, See, when you hear stuff and you read books, you gotta be careful. Is it in the Bible? So he makes a foolish statement. He says, the question is, what are you doing to cause her to be that way? First off, who said he was doing anything? Some women just crazy. Some men just crazy. You don't have to do nothing to them. They're going to wake up crazy. They're going to go to bed crazy. And then he says, she's a mirror of you. Now, now y'all correct me because this, this being recorded is going to go all over the world. I want to know the statement in the Bible that says a woman is a mirror of her husband. A mirror. Mirror me what I'm looking at. That you not. Nah, I've never seen that in the Bible. So that's. I don't know if he made it up or if he heard some silly denominational or some clown in the Church of Christ say something foolish like that. But no woman is a mirror of her husband. I'm gonna read the text that says what, how, how is she to him? It's just a mirror because then the church is a mirror of the Lord. The church is never. A mirror of the Lord. Uh, we have to understand there are spots and wrinkles in the church that mars its image. But the church itself, once that's removed, will be as beautiful as it looks. For and to God it is still beautiful. It just has spots and wrinkles in it. So when we say that, you literally blame a husband for everything that she do, which is silly. There are things he will be held accountable for. That he should be aware of. But not in this case. Look at what Ephesians says. Chapter 5. And remember our theme. 
making adjustments to the changes within your family. Have to adjust. So it says in Ephesians 5, we're just going to deal with this understanding. Why submit yourself to your own husband as to the law? What if she don't want to do that? So I guess, you know, it's your fault. This is ridiculous to teach that. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Ephesians 5, 24 says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband and everything. So you being subject to someone does not make it your fault that they won't act right. But then it's God's fault. Israel act crazy. And it's Jesus' fault too. That's ridiculous. Because he's not married to just some invisible organization. He initially receives this kingdom. Which is his bride. But then the spots are added. Because the bride going back up. With only clean saints in it. So he is removing the spots and wrinkles. Not literally removing the people. But removing the problem. As each individual is considered his bride. In that sense. With that person. So verse 25 says. Husbands love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of word by the word. Now if you say she's a mirror you. How she is, it's on you. That's a lie. No, it is not. She may be crazy. The bottom line. Unruly. She may be like Goma. Uh, uh, Hosea's wife. I mean, my goodness, man. What you gonna do with Goma? But try to work with her. She's crazy. She, she, somebody said he shouldn't have married. No, the Lord told him to marry. Pick any prostitute you want. Marry one. So he picked out. I'm sure he gave it much thought. And she was still crazy. So the idea is this a person has to understand this. Is that you can't see you put a husband in a case. Well, it's like he gave up. He, he definitely finna get out of marriage. When you tell him she my mirror, I'm out then. And I can't do nothing with her. That's ridiculous. You can't say that. It, it's more more burden than a man can bear. He can only say the things of the Lord and do that which is right, and that's as much as he can do. And so he says in verse uh, twenty seven that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So this is how the Lord deals with each of us. He removes the blemish, but there is a point where he says, "Okay, this one can't get clean. This one's out." So a person has to stop. So there is a point where maybe this guy is right. Maybe this movie is for just buck wild. It cannot be controlled. Say what she wants when she wants for whatever reason she wants. So this guy makes a statement. And see that sounds good in a denominational setting. She is a reflection of you. Okay now, now hold on. Where is that at in the Bible? See that's how, now that's how you get mirror. Reflection. She's not. In all cases. No, she's not. Some things she's doing just, and we're not this is not a woman bad day. This is a responsibility day of brothers. What is your realm of control? A man needs to understand what's his realm of control so he don't lose it. He'll turn his back on the law. If, if, if the law would have say, however she come out, I'm gonna hold you account. No. See, that's what a mirror means. See, because what can you not fix on you in the mirror? Now we're not talking about your creative standards. We're talking about what's on you. Our skin in of itself has to get dirty to be dirty. So we can wash it. We can comb our hair. You can put makeup on. What have you. But you, you can't make marriage such a beast. To where a man, old oh man, like the apostles say. Who, did, who can marry? Who can marry? Because that's why Jesus clarifies the statement. And he explains so they can calm down because man, if it is a case, a woman just act like she wants. You can't force her just act like she wants unless she's sleeping with another man. That's what they were thinking. But Jesus wasn't saying that. But that's what this guy is saying. She's a mirror of you, a reflection of you. There is no text, brethren, that teaches that. There is no text that teaches that. Please make sure if you don't get nothing else, there is no text that uses the word reflection and mirror. The church is not a reflection. It is Christ's body. And guess what happens to your body? Your body gets dirty. See, that's why I use that term. Sometimes your clothes get torn. Sometimes something cuts your body. And you repair. You repair. So he didn't say the church is the mirror of Christ. This is what's wrong with saying things that are not in the Bible. They distort the person's interpretation 
of marriage. Can you imagine a man wanting to get married now? No, she she gonna she gonna be a reflection of me. Hey, how can I control that? He don't want to get married. He rather shack because he, he know he can't control a grown person. He can't. So it starts with mom. It starts with the wife. This is the first area we want to talk about in this explanation of the adjustment that go on within the home. You have to adjust to the wife, brother. Yeah, I think the relationship is different because, you know, there's there's a rule there. There's a rule in, within the relationship, and or one might think physically it's a it's a it's a put my hands around your throat rule, <laughs> but that's not the mirror that you want to see. That's right. You know, because uh, right. it's not that kind of it's not that kind of rule. That's right. It's a it's a it's like you know it's like being in business together, but it's not. It's a yeah. management rule. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? There's there's guidelines in the family that you better not go too far as the ruler of the household in other words mm -hmm. you can't you can't you right. got to you know you got to carry the house you know what that's i'm right. saying because right. yes. but right here first corinthians 11 says first uh, corinthians 11. Okay. verse number one be ye followers of me even as also i am also of christ yes. now i pray you brethren that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as i delivered them unto you Amen. but i would have you know that the head of every man is christ and the head mm -hmm. Of the woman is the man that's right and the head of christ is god Amen. so every head is different when that's you look right. in the mirror my head is different from your head that's right the mirror got to be perfectly if you look in the mirror it's got to be perfectly imaged of, of the whatever you're looking at yes. there's no way that's going to be possible if you i don't see my wife and i look in the mirror that's right mm -hmm. i'll be in trouble you, right i be going to <laughs> the wrong job like like you're throwing a dress off you be calling me talking about <laughs> did, you, did you lose your mind this morning <laughs> That's you know, right. You're okay, you know. So that's right. I understand that's ridiculous, though. That's right. Yeah. Well said, brother. Well, you know, the blessing and that understand. You got to understand, too, everybody's not married to a Christian wrong. I'm going to be honest. I've been blessed. My wife, I don't have to deal with stuff I hear in homes. I'm just being real. They're not holy people. I'll tell somebody one day, I don't know what it would be like if I had to be married to a, a, a non-Christian. Mm. See, and that's why some people, when their spouse die, they just don't get married. I mean, it's just like, they don't get married. Because it's not that they are fish. It's like, they feel like nobody can compare to that. And those type of people don't need to get married. Because you will be comparing them to your deceased spouse. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is that people are going to have differences. You're going to have discussions, go against thoughts, and, and try to prove your point. But, man, you shouldn't be dodging grits. And stuff like that, and crazy stuff. Looking for your wife at a club. I never have to do that. My wife has never been with no, no, if she has, she's a master magician because I've never seen or heard any report. Has to be looking for her no club, you know. Who this man keep calling the house asking for sugar mama? I'll call her for that, no, none of that trash. I'm just being real. And so, and I'm saying that, and, and many of you that are listening around the world, you can comprehend, and as audience, you don't have, have to deal with that either. But, but the idea is that the families who have certain struggles that rise up, as Brother Hinton said, you got to know what are your boundaries. Well, you just can't jump up and start grabbing people. You know, you know well, then if I should build a mirror, I'm, when, I, when I put my necktie on the mirror, I'm, I'm going to grab it like I put my neck. No, you can't do that. See, because you don't lost your mind. You don't get to do that. So how do you make the adjustments? And that's what the scriptures are telling us now. How does Christ make the adjustments? How does he approach the spots, the wrinkles? How does he deal with it? He does deal with it. But the idea is to make it bigger would mean then Christ is allowed to help because he doesn't save everybody. God was allowed to help. He didn't save everybody. So in a mirror, you totally control what's in the mirror. And see, that's why that statement is not biblical but I, i'm telling you saints it's being taught and then somebody will go well you know what i mean no we don't know what you mean because we know what a mirror is and they're trying to say it's spiritual it's spiritually incorrect because as key just pointed out I don't, i'm looking at me in the mirror and that's all who i'm going to look at so i have to look at you through the mirror the scriptures to see to know make adjustments sometimes uh, and this is for me, and not, not to the women's side. The women have to make adjustments too. We start out with the men. We want to put that which is responsible first, the men. But a woman has to make adjustments. Sometimes uh, age, 
body changes, causes people to act different. So you have to make adjustments. There's no need to keep going. See, you weren't like that when I first met. There's no need to keep going there. Yes, right. people are 30 years old and our things are different. The kids are old. The kids are older than when you got married. Yeah, yeah. They're older than when you got married. So it's like, you know, it's a different landscape. So you have to adjust. So, okay, okay. All right. So, uh, you have a thought, comment, feel free to make it. Uh, now, so we look at what else does it say about the, the man side. Now, let's talk about the woman side. If you notice, there's more in there about the man. So a lot of times people get excited, you know, and say submit to your husband. But there's more information in Ephesians 5 to the man. And see, this is how Christ is showing us. I'm, I'm, I'm showing them more on you. Men need to handle their business. You don't need to be recalling hitting your wife. Now, I'm going to say that forever. And if there's people with a problem, then the problem starts with God. I'm just repeating. You don't need to be hitting on your wife. Simple as that. If you can't be a man, acknowledge, call someone who is a faithful Christian male. All people say, I can't be a man. I am losing masculinity and turning feminine. I just hit my wife in the mouth. Oh, now that's a good explanation. Now we can we can accept that and deal with you. If you try to say anything else, it's foolishness. Because he says here uh, in verse uh, number uh, twenty-eight, so are men to love their wives as their own bodies. Now here's come. Now it isn't really your body, but how do you work real? like it is your body? See, it's attached to you, your body. So if it's hurting, what do you do to your body? If it's Weak. What do you do? You know, you take your a hammer, hit your leg. Stupid weak leg. Won't stop beating your your leg with a hammer. You 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 tell them to hey, man, my leg is hurting me. You know, I got a cramp. You don't get a cramp in your leg and then take a knife and start cutting a tendon knot. You don't do that. So why would a person do that if your wife is cramping, so to speak, your star? See, this is the idea. So he says in verse twenty nine, for no man ever yet hated his own friend. Now that's the text. He going to take care of it the right way. But nourish it and cherish it, it even as the Lord, the church. And nourish it, gives it what it needs as far as it may be an emotional thing. You won't always have the physical things you want, but you always have the power to be emotional, compassion, compassion to your spouse. Says, uh, even as the law, uh, even as the law of the church, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his mouth. So that's why he treats us in that manner. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. Notice it's Paul, okay, you know, it's pointing out, okay, you, you chose this man, male, so, so handle it right. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. But then if there is no a look in the mirror and make adjustments, because however she is, that's how I am. This is crazy. This is craziness. And so, this is definitely being taught, though, this nonsense like that. And what it does is, it makes the male give up on relationship. And they will be up in the denomination world on the church. Because the standard is higher than a human can reach. And so, having understood that, now the wife... The wife may look like I'm in a bad situation. Let's go to Peter for help. So the wife looks at the changing landscape uh, within her life. First Peter 3. And she sees her husband. Uh, the children have gotten older. Uh, they're in the house. If she should see that the children are making decisions now that are causing them havoc in their life. She may have to pull her husband aside and say, you know, you can't, uh, don't, don't let them do this. You know, this is a bad decision. He may go, man, they grown. You know, what? What? They're grown? What does that mean? It means nothing to God. You still, the landscape has changed, you still have to do something about it. But say, so they grown, they got a house. They got a house bigger than ours. So what? Are they smoking dope in the house? You have to say something. So I just come here and say, you know, uh, I think they're smoking dope, you know, and I know for a fact. They said that they was grown and they are smoking dope. You know, you need to tell them something. You tell them, what? Oh, he just handed off the baton, which he's not supposed. You know, when you're running the, the relays, 
Keith was a relay runner. I don't know what about. I know Keith. Keith fast. He's a young man. You don't hand a relay to the coach. You don't hand a relay to the coach on the team. You run. He got to warm up like you. You don't run over there. He go coach. They got that disqualified. You can't do that. So you can't hand the baton off to your wife till you tell him. I've done that before. I'm telling you, it don't work. It's not right. It's a sin. You have to acknowledge and adjust. You can't do that. They're telling you things because they feel they're not being listened to maybe by the children that are now grown and gone. And so you have to say something. Then people may say, one of the children sometimes may say, well then I just won't come over there for the holidays. And what is that supposed to mean to us? I won't come by for your birthday like we usually get. And what is that supposed to mean for us? If you don't want to act right, well, why don't you come around on birthday smelling like weed? I don't want you in the house. You might just put one away, put it on the car. Whole car smell like weed. You smell like weed. Spray and per weed and perfume smell. Nobody wants you. Don't stay home. If you got something, mail it. Because you do owe. Do something, but don't come around here. So you have to understand just because the landscape change, you're still accountable to say something because this is still your family. And this is the thing that God knew about Abraham, he could trust. He said, I know Abraham. He's going to tell his family how that right. See, they, of course they were grown. And you can see the impact even on a wild man like Ishmael. As wild as Ishmael is. In Genesis it says that Ishmael and Isaac buried their father. So wild as he was, he had still a degree of strength. To show a connection of love where he knew, uh, I, I'm going to come help my brother. Who was the heir and got everything. Bury my father. Our father. And yeah. With two different mamas. Yeah. But that's the connection. And the Lord knew I'm going to the right. Not that he would have been forced to give an account if Ishmael hadn't even came to the funeral. It's about it shows he influenced him. And that's the best you can do is influence. And so therefore... Look at 1 Peter 3. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. That's a key word, own husband. Not somebody else's husband. Own husband. Somebody else be telling you, you know, you know, he's got these guys. That, you know, that's the guys that work. Oh, for one, you sisters. I know you already know. Probably better not. That's guys at work that they study women. I hope you know that. They buy books on women. They buy books on cooking. You know, I made a beautiful souffle. What do she want to know? She got a husband. If she want a man to make her a souffle, she'll ask her husband, get you a book and we'll, boy, we can learn how to make souffle. You don't need no souffle from your dirty hands. You're single. Go get you a wife and make her a souffle. Telling y'all that, trying to get into your mind, you know, so, so you know, uh, my dad used to take my mom out to dinner once we get husband going to do that. Why are you telling Why are you telling about it? What's that folks' business, man? Obedient to your own husband. Not that clown. And so that's rule one. Says that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of why. So you know, you have some women who are married to denominational men. Or men that don't go to church at all. They are, they're denomination within themselves. And they're members of the church. But they will tell you, he's very respectful. He's never tried to hit me. I don't think he's ever fooled around with me. I don't know anything about it. He's just, he's just a good husband. Okay, that part's true. And he knows she feels that way about him. And so, even though he hadn't obeyed, he's watching. Well, she's sure living it. She lives it. She lives what they talk about at that church of Christ. You know, it may surprise them. I'm going to go to church with you today. Mm -hmm. Well, really? Okay. You know, don't go crazy. You go to church. I got to call the news. Don't act crazy. Just say, okay. Right. All right. Well, wonderful. I'm so happy. Yeah. Don't mock him with it because then you'll never go, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When we're obedient to God's word, we show God's power. And then God is glorified because it's not in man to direct his own footsteps. If it wasn't for God's righteousness, we would be going our own way. We would be doing everything that we think of. So when you talk about the hierarchy of like the man and then Christ being the head of the man and the man being the head of the wife, at the end of the day, that's what it's going to that's where it's going to fall, right. you know, and the righteous instructions will give God glory. Amen. Well said. You know, when you see a head and lead, your head leads. Your head sees things coming. Your head hears things. Your head says things. Say a, say a thing to prevent the body from being damaged. Uh, 
Your head doesn't tell your body, you a stupid fool. You know, your head don't say that to your own, you know, to your own body. It's sorry about it. I hate this body. I wish it was burning all right now. You know, you know, you don't do that. You know, I'm going I'm to leave this body. I wish I could leave. You know, it's the only body you get. This, you cherish it and nourish it. And the law has already said that any person go against that is lying because every man believes that way. And so it says here, uh, it can be won by the lifestyle of the wife. So that's power within itself. You know, you talk to them as much as you can then. When, when not, you just, you know, respect them, you know. Uh, and, and, and they may say, did, did, you, did, did you make a final decision on the children? I said, you know, I thought they should go to this school here. Uh, you know, because the neighborhood bad over there. You say, well, yeah, I heard what you said. You know, I looked at it and you were right. Yeah, so, you know, I'm on, on your, you know, you the head of the house. And, uh, you know, but I, I value your opinion. Well, no, I don't want you to just take it because I said, well, no, I'm saying, honey, you were right. So you give him his proper his honor. And Ron said, man, you know, that's beautiful. He remembers that, you know. Yeah. You don't want, you know, you know I'm just going to do it because you the head out. Because if it was my thing, I wouldn't listen to nothing you said. But I don't want to go to hell. I wouldn't listen to nothing you said. See, now nah, you, just, you just diminish him to nothing now. Nah. You know, it is true that you are following because of the Lord. But not overemphasizing, showing he is valueless. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and basically, you and the Lord, he is nothing. And see, if you do that, that's wrong too. Because no matter if he's a member of the church, he's still a man. I guarantee you somebody breaking house, he's going to get up and take care of his business. Believe that. Because you are all he has. And whether that's children or not. Even old people, man, you break your old person, they will they'll get a life for their wife. It's like, man, that's, that's all I got, man, you know. And I remember it was reported that way before. Old guy said, how did you beat these two young men? He said, they were taking the one thing that was the most important to me. They were trying to take my wife's life. So uh, he beat up two young men it was years ago in a local newspaper, Crocker. The one that well, the Lord gave me strength. He fought with all he had. Oh, I'm talking about 70, 80 years old. So the idea is that that's, that's the heart. You don't have to be a Christian. You have to love your wife to do that. Uh, yeah. Brother Free. Thank you, Brother Van. I uh, just wanted to read the scripture in uh, Job chapter 36. Right. It's uh, 24 and 25. You know, it's a good subject. We we'll brought up scriptures on 1 Corinthians 11 uh, concerning the categories that, that we have with uh, the head uh, being man of the wife, also Christ being the head of man and God being the head uh, of Christ. It says in verse 24, Remember that thou magnify his work, which men behold. That word magnify means to enlarge or increase it. Amen. In other words, when you enlarge something, as a picture, uh, you can see it at a, even more details. When you have a picture that you enlarge, there's more details that you didn't see maybe when it was smaller. And so each particular, each particular subject that we're talking about here is gets enlarged on which duty it has in the role of uh, the family, what God's role is with Christ, what man's role is with, with the wife. And it says, uh, verse 25, every man may see it man may behold it afar off and so the judgment that is in his kingdom men may see how it's supposed to be judged from whether it be from another state from another city they see exactly how uh, god wants them to see this particular subject Amen. how god wants them to see god christ the husband the wife the children and this is an image uh that needs to be enlarged that's why he says magnify his work in other, in other words enlarge it so everybody can see it, and so Man. what people are doing is they're uh, diminishing it or making it, sm making this uh, s his work smaller, minimizing it, and so people can't see it, people can't judge it, because they can't judge something they can't see, and so I just wanted to add that. Amen. Beautiful, brother. God love you. And you know, this is our mindset is based off of what we see the Lord saying. This is beautiful. I have these scriptures read. You know, my brother. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, you have something else to say? No, oh, that's you, brother. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sometimes um, I be seeing women running the house better than a man nowadays. And a friend of mine was talking the other day. He said, yeah, because he worked for this company, trucking company. And this guy, you know, he, he runs a trucking company. And he, he was saying, well, I need to talk to you. I don't need to talk to your wife. He said, well, you need to talk to my wife about everything because she's running the show. So I'm like, wow. Hmm. But when it comes to that, some for some 
for some reason have I been seeing a lot of women are taking control of a lot of things uh, over the house. And then when it comes to the man, so we speak, is that sometimes women can actually teach men uh, different ways about finances. Uh, uh, it's a, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, some men, and we do at some time get lazy, mm-hmm. but we say, okay, we're going to let the woman do it. Which we are too, as the men of the household, to take control of our house, spiritually and physically. Because if we have it balanced, off balance, it seems like, okay, we're, we're, we're taking more of the church, take the church than the physical thing. So it's like our physical is lacking, so we have more spiritual than physical. But we got to learn as men how to balance it out. Because if we do go through things, we go through things temporarily, but if we go through things permanently, something is wrong in that picture. So we got to figure out the way how to balance it out. Because it, it had been sometimes when my house was unbalanced. It was more spiritual than it was physical. And sometimes it would be more spiritual than, and then when, when it's off balance, when it's less physical, you know, sometimes the women in the household, they get weary and stuff like the stuff is not balancing right. But if we keep it on a level, yeah. you know, because women is sometimes are the weakest vessel. We know that. And sometimes when bills are not paid, this and that, they get kind of, oh, kind of, and they look at us. You know how, you know how we, they look, women look at the men and they, come on, you, know, you got to pick up the pace. Because I, 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 I we, have, we have more spiritual, but our physical is lacking. So it's something wrong with the picture. We got to figure out a way. But then when it comes in with a woman, when she teaches a man and show a man, it's like, wow, my wife is showing me and teaching me things which Amen. I need to do. Amen. I need to do. And I'm supposed to be the strongest man. I still have my legs, my fingers, my feet, everything. So I shouldn't have my family lacking on it and have more spiritual. So it takes a woman to actually, for some reason, build up a man's courage to say, hey, something is wrong, baby. You have to do something about it. If not, we're going to we be living out there in the water somewhere. Mm-hmm. So we have to figure out what it is as far as us being a man. You know, because my wife had brought me a long way. If it wasn't for my wife, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if it wasn't for her, man. I, so now I figured out, hey, all these books about finances and stuff to read, I said, you know what? I'm going to get on top, and I'm going to try to balance my family out so we can live the life that God wants us to live, spiritually and physically. But if we keep having struggles and physically, how are we going to jump? Because it kind of throws you out when it comes to spirit, because you, you can't focus on God, and it throws you out. So you have to balance your life out. Amen. God bless you, William. And you know, this is a good thought. I like the way he said that, because we want to make sure that we can comprehend this particular subject is exactly we're talking about making adjustments because you're not spiritual if you are not looking after your house. See, so there's no way you can be holy and not being aware of your house. Like as far as you may have too much stuff, you need to downsize. Uh, But anytime you have to give up service to God, to do something physically for your family, you have to understand you can't possibly win that way either. That's impossible. Because when the law talks in, uh, what, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 7, when he talks about the person is catering to the desires of the husband or wife because they're physically married, he doesn't mean that you're not serving him. He's talking about the amount of time that you have. Whereas you may want to go and do some particular work that other people are allowed to do but they may be single without spouses or they may be with spouses that don't have children so that's what he's talking about he's not talking about though don't serve him God will never accept that because he makes a statement in the gospel if you love husband or wife father mother children more than me you're not worried so that's got to be a red flag well hold on that can't be what he's saying and what William is talking about is dealing with the fact that you still have to be a physical husband, as he pointed out. You can't be lazy. Why? Because the second Thessalonians 3 says if one doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. So see, somebody would say, well, you know, I'm spiritual. No, you're not spiritual if you're second Corinthians 3. You're not spiritual. See, the things of the Lord are invisible. They have the real. 
far as the meanings. But the physicalities of that, they have to literally go feed the Grecian widows. That was physical, but it was carried out spiritually. So you have to have somebody going and bring them things, looking out for their needs. So that is still spiritual. But the key is, is a person who is not loving his spouse. What do you mean love? What the Bible says should be love. The children. Uh, monitoring. Knowing what's going on in their life. You don't have to go up to your wife and go, I know what's going on in your life and I am monitoring. It's like, like a, 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 a alarm system tells you gate four is called. Not like that, but you should be aware of what's going on. The stress level is going up. Stuff's going. Now there are going to be some things that God not going to remove that's going to stress to see what you're going to do. That's like the apostles on the boat. That wasn't changing. They were stressed to the max. They said, we're perishing. That's stress. But he didn't change it. He went to sleep on them. Not sleep doing the job. He said you should be relaxed like me because nothing's going to happen. Don't worry about it. Amen. But we have to understand there's a difference. So people have to be cautious. Put a hand on the word stress now because God's not going to let the stress get out of your life. I'm telling you, no, he's not. He's saying there'll be more persecutions. With Christianity comes more persecution. You think of persecution when you talk about the Bible. Mm, life in general. Life in general. So we have to embrace that so you don't create a false facade that your wife is going to be perfect or your husband is going to be perfect and there will be no ripples. Because and, and, challenges alone, like we said, the landscape change. People get older, they're going to move a little slower. People get older, they become a little more cautious. People get older, they exercise more wisdom than physical exertion because they know what works and what doesn't work. So, so some things may change. Decisions may be a little different. I don't want the convertible no more. Two seater, you know. You know, even though the kid's gone, I need more room, you may say. So, I'm getting a, well, you used to say, yeah, but I'm getting a sedan, you know. Because we're putting stuff in the back and we need so decisions are made. You know, and why is that? You have to adjust to those. And go, go, go you change. You know, okay. Adjustments. Adjustments. That's what a person has to understand. Because they're going to happen. The landscape is not going to stay the same. So, look at 1 Peter 3. The wife sometimes feels like I'm helpless. But no, look at Williams account. He said, you know, my wife helped me a lot. My wife has helped me a lot and still helped me. We'll help more. And so will your wives, those that are married, those that are listening to what we're saying. So he says, uh, this is how the battle is done. He says, verse 2, while they behold your chaste conversation, which is your life, coupled with fear. How you have respect for God and respect for them. Who's adorning, let it not be that of our adorning of plating hair. Nothing wrong with plating your hair. But don't think because I got a new hairstyle, he fixing to really act right. He will act even more of a fool. He goes, how much money you spend? He may really act a fool. You know, if he's a foolish man. Like, look at Abigail. How did she handle Nabal? She did the Lord's will. She did the Lord, making her both spiritual and a good physical wife too. Because if she hadn't, David would have cut his throat like you gut a pig. And everybody that was a male. So she helped him physically and spiritually. By doing something he distastefully hated. And treated her like she was dead for 10 days. Because he became dead to her. And God killed him and made him dead 10 days later. And so I try to tell people who are married. Be careful how you treat your spouse. Especially talking about a man. Don't act too crazy now. Because you might be in the graveyard pretty soon. Because the Lord is not going to let women suffer. Just continue. He's just not. just not going to do it. Especially to his daughters. Verse 3. Who's adorning. Say not playing of hair. Or wearing of gold. Or putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. This is how you'll win him. And that which is not corruptible. Even the armor of a meek and quiet spirit. Quiet spirit, meek spirit don't mean you don't say nothing. Uh, you, you, you know, don't mind one of husband come in at 3 in the morning. You can't give an account where you've been. That's legitimate. You'll be blessed if you don't get grits. You'll be blessed. Because, you know, you can push the wrong button on a person. You come in, you better be able to validate where you've been. And it better be where you were supposed to be. Uh, it don't matter what age you are. Men act crazy at all ages. So it don't matter young, old, old, it don't matter. You know, or young. He says, a quiet spirit, a controlled spirit. Spirit that knows how to ask. I mean, I'm just here quiet. You know, well, he's a man and men do that. That's not what it means. So he says, which is in the sight of God of great Christ. Jezebel let Ahab do what he wants. She was a sorry wife. 
a lousy wife. He want another man's vision. I'll get it for you. Aren't you the king? I'll get it for you. See, she was a lousy wife. Faithful but lousy. And so he says in verse 5, For after this matter in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. As on again. Verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. See, she obeyed, you know, she, cause she, and she actually said this when she was laughing. Mm -hmm. Some people may think that she called around, Lord, my Lord. She said, she my Lord. I'll be able, you know, to have a child, you know. She was saying that, so this is how she felt in her heart, you know. And he's my rule, you know. That's why we say, you know, Abraham was a good man. Let me tell you something, man. Abraham had another woman. All right, now see, don't put him too high up there now. So you got to be careful. See, sometimes we'll just put a person. He was, yeah, but Abraham had to make some adjustments in the family. He wouldn't check this boy Isaac acting crazy, Ishmael acting crazy. Yeah. You know, he cried, man, you won't get rid of this woman and my boy, you know. So, you know, Abraham wasn't hitting on all cylinders all because he is a human being. So, you know, saying, oh, yeah, she's married to Abraham. Yeah, hey, could you have been married to Abraham? He had been, he could go, can you, can you have heard your prayer from your husband? Lord, she want to take my baby and my girlfriend. See that? Because you have took that prayer. See, I'll be careful, man. That's a real, that's a real conversation you have with the Lord. And so, you know, the idea is that he says, obey whose daughters you are, as long as you do well, and be not afraid with any amazing. So this is how you're the daughter. Likewise, your husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor to the wife as of the weaker vessel, and as being asked to give the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. What does honor mean? I'm bringing the microphone, sister. Oh, uh, him. If a woman is stepping up, then she got on heels. See her stepping up. <laughs> yeah, you gently grab her. You gonna grab her? Come on, girl. Make her fall all over the concrete. Cast like so it's gently. Weaker vessel. She's got the heels on. She's coming up. You know, it's honor given. You know, you stand. You know, open the door for her. You know. You know, hold up, but you know, come on in. Some man open the door and knock you out of seeing it. They'll bump you out the way. Getting in the door before you. And sometimes they'll wire you. Just watch sometimes you, if you park on this watch door work. Watch how the door work. Sometimes a woman will step back and you know she don't like you. <laughs> he don't even he not even paying attention. You know, he's not even paying attention. Uh, go ahead, Sister No, brother, when you read verse five and verse six for after this man of the old uh in the old time, the holy women also who trusted God. Mm -hmm. And then it says, and even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. It really is a powerful thing when you look at that. Because you don't know, even if you tell your husband the truth, you don't know it, what he's going to do. Right. I'm saying, even if, like you said, the, um, the man who believed he uh, Abraham... He did some things that he wasn't supposed to do. Yeah. So you just have to trust God that God is going to work everything out for your soul's salvation. But when it says, um, and are not afraid with any amazement, that really takes faith. Because there are some things that will shake you, but you have to continue forward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Well said. Well said. And you know, this is a uh, faith that we have to understand and this is something that just as you trust your wife and your wife trusts you when you're out of each other's eyesight that's how you have to live you have to have faith that okay I've done all I can now it's up to them to come back home to me and come back the way they left to me uh, still loving me and doing that which is right uh, the Lord will show you out of every temptation that happens and this is what the scripture said. Don't have any amazement. You know, he probably messing around. She probably with that dude at work. Don't have time for that nonsense. See, because although the landscape is changing and things are adjusting, and, and uh, you may have more time or less time, depending on how the family changes, you still have to carry out the rules of the marriage that God has said. It doesn't matter if you're seniors in the marriage. Sometimes people think they can say anything because they, they senior citizens, they can say anything. They'll say anything crazy to their wife, you know. You know, people be looking at them, dude, y'all have solid wife. And you ain't got to be at least seven. And you talking crazy like that to y'all like you 22 with no brain. You know, you're going to be like, man, you know, what she didn't say, well, she, well, leave them alone. She, she must 
not care. No, she cares. Just been with this guy 50 years. He was crazy when he was young. This is, this, this is an improvement she may think. So it's still not right. It's, it's not right. Because for this cause, people are brought into the judgment. How did you interact? Adjustments have to be made. Forgiveness has to be sought out. Mercy has to be extended. An individual has to realize what we talked about this morning. God determines truth. God says how relationships should go. And one of the things God distastefully hates is disrespecting a woman that is now older. I'm going to read that and then we're going to wrap up here. Let's go to Malachi. Yeah. And this is something that men will do. Uh, you just have to be real with it. Uh, they reach a certain age. They talk about women have midlife crisis. I don't know what men do. They do something. Get a convertible. If he don't have, hey, he gonna go pay for something to get sold in his head. He gonna let the convertible down. Then almost get all that blowed out the window. And he gonna exercise, take vitamins, you know. And and he got which is good to stay healthy. But now nah, here come young women that don't know what your age are, don't care. Well, you gotta know how to have a hedge about you. You know, I'm married. You know, happily married. You know, you know, you know, you know. But you know, I, I like a guy. I give him to you. No, I'm married, and my, my wife, my, my wife loves it too. That's why I was still married. You know, I tell people just to be plain speech. That's where it's at. You know, and so Malachi chapter two, he says. Uh, in verse uh, number 11, Judah had their treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel. Now see, he's taking a big, he taking this real big. God has got a major problem here. And in Jerusalem, for Judah had profaned the holiness of the law which he loved and had married the daughter of a strange God. The law will cut off the man that do it this, the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offered an offering unto the Lord of hosts. And this have he done, covering the altar of the Lord with tears and weeping, and crying out insomuch that he regarded not the offering anymore, or received it with good will at your hand. So now everybody say, yeah man, that's wrong man, disrespect, worship another God. And I go, okay, well let's look at verse 14. Yeah, you say well, because the Lord have been with us between thee and the wife not you. So I said another problem too. The woman you are married to, that you're supposed to be married to, I got a problem with you. He says, Against whom thou hast judged treacherously. Yes, she is thy. What does she describe? She's your companion, not your slave. Right. She's your companion. Right. Your companion is somebody very, somebody says, This is my companion, somebody very important in your life. Whatever it is, whether it's two friends, a husband and wife, a brother and sister, this is someone very important. And the wife of thy covenant. He made a covenant. So now you're a covenant breaker. She's the wife. Says, verse 15, and did not he make one? The Lord is saying, if I thought you needed two wives, I would have made Adam two. Three, four, five, or six when I started him out. He says, yet, had he the resolute spirit, he still had plenty of spirit. Now, he's made all these other bills of people. Plenty of spirit was left to make him more than one wife. And well, for one, that he might seek a godly seed. So this is what the Lord says, I want a godly seed, you and your wife. Abraham should have knew this. When he said you're going to have a child, he should have knew. Must be with Sarah. Because I want a God to see. Him and Sarah concoct this nonsense deal. Of going into Hagar. Now everybody mad because it blew up in everybody's face. But the Lord saying that you have a child. Click. Who you married to Abraham? Let's see. God is she. Mm, most going to make Sarah have a baby. Why didn't think about that? Once again. Because I'm not thinking right. Don't put Abraham too high up. He's not Jesus. He wasn't thinking right. So he says in verse uh, number 16. For the Lord, oh, no, no. oh man, we finna, oh, please, let's go back up. He says, and wherefore one that he might seek a God to see. Therefore, take heed when you see that the Lord is dealing with this. Take heed. He's giving a warning. He's at the judgment. I don't want to talk about it. To your spirit, inward man. And let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. See, you know, I mean, it's so easy, man, you know. You know, man, she's seventies plus. Maybe some people look great at seven. Okay, well, this, you know, this obviously is not one he likes. This guy, or these people doing this. You know, she's not. It's not the same no more. <laughs> You're not the same no more. You know, so I want to get somebody that look like she did when she was twenty. You know, the, the Lord says, I hate that. Yes. He said, I hate that. Yes. So He says in verse sixteen, for the Lord, the God of Israel, said that He hated putting away. Period. 
from one covered vinyl, it's gonna be said, this is violence coming up with some lame excuse. How do you come up with some lame excuse? She just, you know, you know what's sad about we we we, we, we oh my God. Okay, we finna shut it down. If you ever watch these guys that do this, just watch it. They'll show it on TV because it's sometimes where it happens. Just watch them, you know. She makes me feel alive again. You lost your mind. You are crazy. That's what it said. You was alive when you went with the heart. So you must have been alive with your wife who's no longer of the youth. You weren't when you dead then? It's just your emotions, man. This is somebody you don't know, someone new, and that's what's messing your head up. Oh, she likes apples. That's just no, you crazy. That's what's making you feel new because you don't know what to think about her. That's how I was with your wife, but now you know your wife. You don't bail on her. What an idiot. That's right. And the Lord said, I'm going to kill you for that. That's what he means. I'm going to kill you. I hate that mess is what he's saying. Yeah. I want to see you tear. Don't bring me a suffer. I want to see you at my church. I don't want to see you there. Coming in there. You know, Lord, I don't want to hear that. He's saying, because you know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Right. And he says, clearly, as we wrap up a few more lines, he says uh, that, why is it like this? Covering up violence. She don't like to go nowhere no more. She's 72, 73, man, 75. What are you talking about? You crazy? So you might not think this happened. Like, man, that happens a lot. Let me tell you how much it happened. I'm in the advertising business with the material I deliver. And when we, when we deliver stuff, I'm telling y'all what I know. We deliver stuff about cruises. It's always several pictures. Solid white hair dudes. With a girl has black as these shoes, and you know she not his age, and they showing him on the boat. They tell him whatever you want to do, man. It's on you, but we got a deal for you. There are some you see a woman his age with him, and it's not her hair dye. Her body is different. You can look at him and tell he not her age. They're sending a message. That's not how you live, man. You 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 asking God, please put me in hell. That's ridiculous. So he says here. Take heed, to, take heed to your spirit. He says twice. Second verse 16. That you do not trust it. But the Lord is serious. See the Lord made us. Sometimes in a marriage. Somebody about to conk off for the other. Somebody going to look older. Yeah. You know. And it ain't going to be nothing you can do about it. Yes. Don't deal trust. This is for the men and women will be stressing. Yeah. Because it will usually happen with men. They will just do it. They just do it, man. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with I mean, you got a sports car. No, a preacher had a sports car. He said, me and my wife ride all over town. What the hell is supposed to be? His wife in there. Top down, we having fun. All right. Yo, man, so it's your wife. That's all you got to do. You can have 10 of them. Make sure it's your wife. You're going to go on a cruise on a boat eating shrimp, dipping shrimp sauce. Make sure the woman across from you is the one you were married to when you got on the boat. That's all you got to do and you can enjoy your life. Amen. That's no need. And the reason being is because because of landscape changes, children gone. Some people act a fool. As soon as the last child gets through with college, they leave. I'm telling you what I know. In the church of Christ. As soon as the last one gets out of college, he's gone. Like, it's like a, like a wind-up toy. Boom! He's out of there. <laughs> On his way to hell like an ox going to the slaughter. Who do you think you are? This is a time for you all to be together. You know? He'll never consider himself old. He'll say, she old now. You old too. <laughs> See, that's, I'm telling you, so we done seen what the law how he deals with this stuff. And it don't matter if you're old or young, just some, some men are so stupid. This is a different woman, a half different race maybe. He goes banana. She, she just makes me feel like I, when I was young, Man, she is pumping your head up with nonsense. Like an ox getting fed and the devil going to be the one to cut your head off. Because you're not getting into heaven. Not getting into heaven. Same with a woman. Women will do it too. Because sometimes women know how to make themselves look a lot younger than husbands. Man, they put them in. They get dyed. They don't have dyed. They'll get a wig. They'll get their figure right. His back off and old from working a lot of years. She have a boyfriend in a minute. And uh, they be coming, you know, uh, you know, I know what she's doing, but We've been married so long. We have a lot together. Man, you better tell your wife, you can't do this. Because you are still responsible. And this is the difference in responsible in the mirror. And I'm done with this statement. What did the angels tell Abraham? Why is Sarah laughing? 
They wanted to know, are you aware that she doesn't believe? But that was chapter 18. In Genesis 17, guess who laughed first? Abraham. But now, now you see why. Yeah, it's because you over there laughing when you're talking to God. Probably. Now she laughing. You don't know how to get your mind right to tell her that this really going to happen? This is going to happen. It's going to be her seed. You haven't talked to her yet? But so we ain't saw that. Well, he's asking, why is she laughing? Are you doing your job? See, people think, man, God was just Abraham is everything, and to me, everything is everything. It wasn't like that with God. He's his friend, but Abraham had issues. Lying? Yeah. We'll talk about another lesson. Abimelech has to tell Sarah. Your husband come from your eyes. You mean she was reproved. This dude lying to you. This nonsense about you, his sister. He should have done. So the man isn't perfect. He's a great man. He's a faithful man, but he's like any righteous man. He has to be told the scriptures. You don't just get to guess at how you're going to treat your wife. And this has to be something. Like she said, would that offend me what you said? Well, then if it doesn't offend any other one on earth, well, I, I'm sorry. You know, man, most women wouldn't have said nothing. You do not matter to most women when you marry to her. Apologize. Let it go. Right. And you're done with it. That's the only way you can deal with it, you know. Because being the head don't mean you get to say what you want and do what you want and act like you want to. Now you may do things that you're not aware of. Once it's told, then you have to make adjustments. And that's what the idea is. So there's any more thoughts? Uh, we can't get uh Brother Keith, can you give us a prayer to get us home safe, please? Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you so much. Now, okay. So, you know, okay. That's, that's, that's a five at the end. Yeah, go get your jackets ready. No. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.